So, in this short video, we're just going to have a quick look at the harbour process and look at some of the things that you need to consider while answering exam questions on it. The best way to use this video is to start off by following the link below and downloading the worksheet. Watch the video, making sure that you can pause it at key points and note down key features, especially key words. Have a go at answering the shorter answer questions. Then finally, use your answers to those shorter answer questions to help construct answers to the longer answer questions. <coughs> so, the harbour process is an artificial nitrogen fixation process and is the main industrial procedure for the production of ammonia. During the exothermic reactions, energy in terms of heat is given out. This means that the energy of the products will be lower than the energy of the reactants. So this can go and be represented in a energy level diagram. It's important that when you draw in energy level diagrams, the reactants are physically higher than our products right because the energy or the decrease in energy represents the energy that's being given out also while we're on this it's important to know the equation for the hard process which is nitrogen which is n2 plus 3h2 goes to form 2nh3 and it's also a reversible process so it's a reversible reaction So, because <clears throat> it's a system that's a reversible reaction, we need to consider what happens when we change a number of features. So, we start off by looking at temperature. So, if the temperature of a system at equilibrium is increased, the relative amount of products at equilibrium increases from an endothermic reaction. So, the relative amount of products at equilibrium will decrease for the exothermic reaction. So if the temperature of the system at equilibrium is decreased, the relative amount of products at equilibrium decreases for the endothermic reaction, and the relative amount of products at equilibrium increases for the exothermic reaction. So due to the fact that our reaction in the hard process is exothermic, you would actually get a better yield doing it at a lower temperature as this would favor the exothermic reaction however doing it at too low temperature would mean that the reaction would take too long next thing that we need to think about because the hard process is looking at reacting gases is the effect of changing pressure. So an increase in pressure causes the equilibrium position to shift towards the side with a smaller number of atoms or a smaller number of molecules. A decrease in pressure causes the equilibrium position to shift towards the side with a larger number of molecules and we'll look at this now. So if we look at the reactants we've got four lots of reactants if we now go and look at the products we've got two lots of products so if we just left the pressure as it is then the products would be turning back or the products would remain the same the reactants would want to turn into products because that would lower the overall pressure in the system because we're going from four lots of molecules to two lots. So one way to speed up the reaction even further is to increase the pressure that the reactants are at. By artificially increasing the pressure that the reactants are at, that will go and shift the equilibrium so more reactants are turning into products. So if we now go and look at the reaction as a whole. 
We start off with obtaining hydrogen and nitrogen. The hydrogen generally comes from breaking down methane and the nitrogen comes from the air. They are then pumped and mixed together in a compressor. That compressor will go and increase the pressure that the gases are at. So it will increase the pressure to about 200 atmospheres. That will go and help shift the position of equilibrium so that more ammonia is going to be made. The pressurised gases are then pumped into tanks containing iron catalyst beds. A catalyst is going to go and speed up the reaction without actually getting used up in, its, in the reaction itself. It will also be heated to about 450 degrees as this will speed up the reaction. The unreacted hydrogen and nitrogen gases are then recycled back into the system so it makes it more efficient and the liquid ammonia is cooled down and separated off as a liquid at the end. So, as previously hinted at, there are a lot of compromise conditions that we use in the hard process. So the pressure chosen for the hard process is a compromise. A high pressure increases the percentage yield of ammonia, but having things at very, very high pressures is very expensive. The temperature chosen is also a compromise. A higher temperature gives a faster reaction However, it decreases the percentage yield of ammonia. Quite often in exam questions, you'll see a graph that looks something like this. So it shows how increasing atmospheric pressure goes and increases percentage yield. It also shows how decreasing the temperature goes and increases percentage yield. So at some point, you'll have to go and make some decision about the compromise conditions that's used. And generally, the compromise conditions that are used are that we do it at 450 degrees at a pressure of 200 atmospheres. So, any bits that you are unsure about, go back, watch again, pause the video and have a go at the question following the link below.